part of what's disheartening about this is that I think law enforcement has a really hard job. And I don't, I, I like law enforcement. In fact, I'm a big proponent of law enforcement. I think we need law enforcement officers. But we need ones that follow the rules and that have a sense of where the line is for people's constitutional rights. And while I don't pretend that that's easy, it is part of the job. So this case was about the logger veils and what they had experienced as three black women. Mom, Aseli, she has an older daughter who is also named Aseli, and then a youngest daughter, Ayate, and they were driving from Las Vegas to Berkeley where the oldest daughter, Aseli, was taking classes. So they drove all night, or mom drove all night from Las Vegas to um, heading to Berkeley. You know, it was the early morning hours, 6, 6.30ish in the morning. They get to Castro Valley where they know there's gas stations and food and they decide they're gonna stop and get a Starbucks, you know, re revive themselves. So mom pulls into the parking lot because she's been driving all night, puts her seat back to catch a couple minutes of Z's. The two daughters and mom all end up actually sort of sleeping for about five minutes until she hears a knock on the window. Wakes up and sees an officer standing there and raises her seat up. The officer introduces himself and it starts off, I think, innocent enough. He is telling her that there have been these recent auto break-ins in this parking lot and she thanks him. At some point he says, you know, can I see your ID? And she says, sure, and starts to reach down. And then you, you can, in the video, you can almost see it like something trips in like her brain. She's like, wait a second. I, I went from being somebody who was being protected by this person to now I think I'm being accused of something, to which he then kind of immediately goes into, you know, a pretty aggressive stance. You, you have to show him, you have to give me your ID. And Deputy Holland, who's on the driver's side, his partner officer, Deputy Pope, she's on the passenger side. Ultimately, mom is taken out of the car, put in cuffs. Both of the daughters are put into handcuffs. Each of them is put into separate patrol vehicles. Um, the vehicle is searched. Um, their purses are searched to get their IDs. And a sergeant ultimately does show up at the scene. Interestingly, before he talks to all three, he first, of course, talks to all the other officers. All of that happens off camera. So they all have body cams. And the body cams are on for a lot of this, but then after everybody gets detained, they turn them off. But you can see the video, you just can't hear the audio. And you can see them talking with one another. If what they thought they were doing was proper, why not just leave that audio on and let us hear their thought process, right? That would be really helpful. But they didn't. And, and then they're let go, which is what should have happened. There, there, was, no, there was no crime here. Uh, and they never should have been detained in the first place. They had the police report where Deputy Holland lists these prior quote unquote autobergs that he was investigating, which was the basis for his detention of this family. None of those autobergs involved women. None of them involved three people. The closest you ever got to anything that matched the Lager Veils was being black. Talking about doubling down, it got doubled down again when then the higher ups, including the sheriff himself, endorsed all of this conduct. Uh, they sanctioned it all. They, when they said they reviewed it, they said, yeah, there was no problem here. It doesn't send the right message to people that we entrust with guns and tasers and batons and authority to take away people's freedom, to encourage them to double down on a bad detention by trying to justify it again and again and again by shading facts in ways that they think might be helpful. You know, it's much easier to just say that was a horrible experience and I'll never trust the police again and I'm just gonna get past it and move on with my life. That is a much easier path to take than saying, I'm gonna fight for this thing. I'm gonna get deposed, I'm gonna get accused of lying, I'm gonna have all kinds of horrible insults thrown at me by the defense in this case. You know, that's what the logger veils were doing. They were saying, we're gonna do the inconvenient, traumatic thing in the hopes that maybe this little piece, our little case, helps continue bend that arc so that a mom and daughter 10 years from now have a very different experience, a better experience, and hopefully 
how we have police officers that have a better experience too, right? I don't think this was any fun for the police officers. The Lager Vales are reasonable people. They're, they weren't they, they weren't out for blood. That wasn't the point here at all. The point was, this is wrong. We need people to acknowledge that this was wrong. And the county just kept missing every opportunity that was given to them to just admit it. So the family, I think, is in a good spot, particularly around that shared experience, and then having this really amazing celebration to have these two young daughters uh, go to college. My recollection is that I don't think anybody in the family has actually graduated from college yet, so yeah, Mom Logger Vale now has two. So I think they're in a good space. You know, fingers crossed that'll remain the case. <laughs>